Hi. The title of this podcast is called Unbalanced, and this is part one. I don't know of how many parts it's going to be yet, because it looks like it's a, uh, it's going to be something as a, uh, it's just going to progress. There's so much more to this. The uh, ramifications of this discussion are, uh, are huge, and it encompasses more than just horses, as you'll soon hear. So we're trying to make this not just informative, but we're trying to give you um, a pretty good scope of what Rose and I do. Rose and I go everywhere together as a couple and at work as well. She takes care of all the business end of our business, handles all the information that um, she puts down everything on the horses from how bad they were to how good they were. And also what we needed to treat them at that time, because it gets hard to remember. Uh, Some people are not diligent, I I mean, as far as calling back. So we've taken it out of their hands. Rose makes sure she calls every one of our customers and reschedules in appropriate time. Each horse is different. Some people say they use, you know, four weeks to trim. Some people use six. Some people go out farther. We can, for whatever reason, we tend to go out farther than that. We tend to go six to eight weeks, and eight weeks for some horses doesn't even warrant a trim. And I know that might sound crazy to a lot of farriers or to other people that have been in and around the horses, but uh, the the way we trim and the way we do the work allows the horse to stay nicer. We don't have the problem with cracking, chipping, feet breaking that, again, I can only attribute to the way I've been doing the horses all these years. And I never did see that in a lot of the BLM horses that used to come in because when they're allowed to run wild, that just doesn't seem to happen to them. So we've tried to combine all that information, put it into our business and roll it into what you get as a as barefoot farrier and also with the horse wellness. And... Um, let me, let me just let me just start with something that's real easy and and you'll get some idea where we're going. It says, you know, if I want to start with something, I can ask you, I said, how often should you feed your horse? And most people would say, oh, I feed him once a day or I feed him twice a day. And those answers are all wrong. And let me explain why. Man is on a diet, not a horse. But the same thing is going to happen to that horse that has happened to us. We have that mindset that all these, all this, all this thing about our food pyramid and that we should have breakfast, followed with a snack, followed with lunch, followed with a snack, followed with dinner, and then, I don't know, followed with whatever else before you go to bed. But we have a food pyramid and we're supposed to eat off of that pyramid all day long. There's no way. It's not possible. I can tell you from being at the age I am and as fit as I am and doing the work that I do, I eat once a day. I eat the old-fashioned way. When you get hungry, you eat. Trust me, I could eat more, but I've learned to eat less because it's not something I need at my age. At my age, I need to be fit. I need to be able to stand at these horses, and I need to still be like a jackrabbit. Otherwise, I'd get hurt. (laughs) And I've already got stepped on once this year, but thank God it was just on my on my big toe and uh, a little black and blue, but that goes away, although it still hasn't. It's still as black as can be, and that happened uh, a few months ago. Anyway, so we take, uh, we take horse wellness very serious, and that's what I said with this here. A horse isn't on a diet. So they need to be, what you need to have for them is a system of slow feeding so that the horse can develop its own eating pattern. A horse will eat at midnight, midnight, one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning if it has the food available. It doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't require man's regulation. If you see how we've, let's put it this way, we've been tortured enough through diet, exercise, go to the gym, and we expect to put our animals on that same re- regime that we're on. And it's not, not right. 
you have to take that mindset and just throw it out. Horse doesn't eat like we will, never will. Its biologics are set up totally different. Its stomach is set up different. It does not, does not have a gallbladder. So there's problem one right there. A horse not having a gallbladder means that it doesn't store bile and it doesn't put the bile into the stomach when the food is there that needs to be digested. It's put in all day long. So if a horse goes into a stalled situation to where he only eats once, maybe twice a day, and then has some other things to, uh, to eat, it, 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 it will develop ulcers because it doesn't have food in its system when it needs to eat. So the acids are burning its stomach up, just like in people. So you got to have proper, proper nutrition. And there's, this, that's, this is going to be a long discussion that we'll, we'll use later. But because they're a grazing animal, they have to have the foundation of having something to graze on. Now, if it's hay, grass, whatever they got, it, it, it's got to be made available to them so they've got it 24 hours a day and something that they have to work to get. We, we will talk about this later, about how you can build a grazing system on a five-acre parcel, and the horse can move all day long to get its food, its water, and constantly keep moving to go around to different things. One thing about a horse is it doesn't... It's not going it, to, as long as it has a food source available, it doesn't care where it gets it, as long as it just keeps getting it at those, at those areas. And so we found a way to cover that and to make it entertaining for the horse, but yet so they're moving and doing the things they need to do. They need to not only exercise and have that motility available to them, but they need to see, they need to look around. Don't forget, they... There are things that bother their little world, and they like to look around and make sure that they can see all the things they can. So by making a move, they're looking around, they're being more aware of their surroundings, and yet they're concentrating on what they want most, and that's going to get their food and water. And we, we can show you how we separate it so that they, they can't get both together. And you also don't want, <clears throat> for a horse, you do not want a nutrient-dense food source. And again, we'll we'll talk about those things on the next on the next uh, podcast. But a, a horse has to have a, a food source that's enough to get his uh, dietary needs met, and to have the proper fiber and nutrition and everything that he needs in there. And it's very hard to get. So yes, there are some there are some things that we need to add to his food. Uh, that he'll have to get, and one today is uh, free-feeding minerals. Without minerals being free-fed to horses, there is, n- there is literally nothing in the food they get. There, hay, hay today on a farm field that's been sprayed heavily with Roundup, you can pretty much forget about getting anything off of it that's of any nutritional benefit whatsoever. Because even, the, even when we've taken samples of Roundup hay, we have seen the uh, the protein content go down to as little as seven tenths of one percent. Not even getting enough protein. The best horse hay around, when you can find it, is organic uh, orchard grass. It has the proper level of protein, about eight to ten percent, and it it. it fills up all the requirement needs of the horse except for the minerals the it's not it's not the fault of the grasses that are grown it's the fault of the soil it's grown in it's not nutritionally sound anymore we don't have farmers doing it the old-fashioned way to where they're where they're building soil and we need to have that come back so that we can have that uh, that proper nutrition that's in the soil, and the only way you can do that is by testing your hay. So we're trying to get all those things um, kind of put under one roof so that we can allow people to understand the basic um, the basic premise for starting to feed your animal. And what we say is unbalanced the most is the fact that 
the diet is is unbalanced. A horse can't it cannot survive on alfalfa hay. People say, yeah, I give my horse alfalfa because I can't get good hay. Good hay is not because it's green, nor because it's alfalfa. Alfalfa is too rich in sugars, too high in protein, and then they wonder why the horse is trying to beat the stall down to figure out when it's going to eat again. And that's because that these sugars and everything else, they're getting, they're getting all the problems that a diabetic person would have, and, and we're, we're just letting it travel on to the horses. We're getting to be, uh, they're getting to be heavy. Anytime they get nutrient-dense food, they're getting heavy. They're standing in one spot. They're becoming idle. Um, <clears throat> they have to graze so that they can keep moving. They need to have a um, proper amount of minerals in their diet. Without the minerals, they will absorb no vitamins. You can check all this online. But a horse, just like a human being, we have to have the minerals to allow it to break down the vitamins that are in the food. Um, and man, man's pretty much tortured the animal kingdom the same with this obsession for diet and eating and all of the the way we do snacks and and three meals a day. And we figure that's got to carry on to animals too. But you watch birds of prey, you watch lions. They all eat at different times. Some lions gorge themselves when they eat, and then they don't eat again for four or five days. Animals all have structured eating habits. And because we've made and domesticated a horse does not mean that this animal all of a sudden fell into three meals a day. It just doesn't. He, didn't, he still does not live on our schedule. I don't care what you do to the animal. You're basically torturing them because when that animal wants to de- when he wants to eat is no different than a child. When a, a child is born, mama knows when it's crying, there's only two things that that little one needs. That little one either needs to get its food or it needs to have the diapers changed real quick. A horse is a, a horse just never it it becomes man's man's uh, utility partner but it does not become a diet partner he doesn't eat like you do if you go out and throw him hay at two o'clock in the morning the horse will go in the barn and start eating it it will do what comes natural to, to the horse and i'm not saying that you have to change feeding times and start doing that morning noon night whatever it's better if you go on a slow feeders and Again, like I said, we'll talk in another video how you can develop that on a on a five acre or or a larger parcel, and uh, <clears throat> and not ruin your land so that your land could be used for grazing, where you can take the pastures and rotate, and uh, you can even use them to uh, cultivate hay for yourself. I would I would rather have the horses eat. Uh, some of the grasses, but the grass is best eaten, especially if it's um, not a, if it's a nutrient dense grass, you want to only eat it when there's no dew on the grass late in the day. So the sugar content is the lowest it can be. And you want to make sure that those, um, those grasses are not like alfalfa, ryegrass, things like that. You want to have them, like I say, the orchard grass is the best is the best grass that the horse can eat because he can't eat on that all day long. But you want to limit it to still. Uh, we don't have the the heavy uh, moisture in the morning, and uh, the grasses will. These grasses will serve the purpose, but they're not. Uh, the ideal part is is the horse has the ability to just walk around and constantly keep eating. So all of that right now is going to end this first part of the podcast and we'll brush up on the next one with getting more into the into the uh, not the diet per se but what horses should eat and we'll eventually have uh, some things set up where you could go and get the uh, the free feed minerals and that's basically what they need they need to have minerals that are not on a salt block because they cannot get enough minerals 
off of a salt block. They have to be free fed. So we'll have we'll have places on the website where you can go and click on that and take a look and see if that's something that'll that'll help you out with your horse. But I know I know two things that'll happen. One is your horse is horse is going to be healthier. And the other thing is you're going to find out that the truth is the truth, whether you believe it or not. You do your research and you find out for yourself that we're, what we're telling you comes from 50 plus years of learning and education. But Rose and I do, she does, everything is documented so that when we get through with a horse, we have what we need in front of us for the next trip there. And we know where the horse is at physically when we go out. We've been amazed at what people have done and the pictures they've shown us and how happy they've been when they come back and say this worked perfect for the horse and shows, shows us the pictures after two weeks, three weeks. Some have been after a couple months because the horses were older. But we're just thrilled that, that our patients are getting better, not worse. We've been to enough horses that wanted to be put away by the veterinarians because that's the easiest thing for them to do. But it's not for us. We sit and cry more than the owners do. And our job is to make those horses well, get them back on their feet. And, you know, in all honesty, I want them to be usable. I want them to still be able to ride. God bless you all. Thank you so much for joining us. And look forward to seeing you on the second of these podcasts. Thank you.